Had some scattered storms in the area today and a little bit of hail. A little bit of hail, a little chunks of ice falling from way up there in the sky. You know they're ice, and mm -hmm. everyone knows it's below freezing up there, but a lot of times people say, well, how do you know that? There's an answer, but it's part of a riddle. And the riddle is something happens twice a day around the Earth, day and night, everywhere, and it's all up in the air. Here's the answer. This is the story of a man and a balloon. My name is Jim Salzwiddle, and I'm a hydrometeorological technician. Jim is preparing to launch a weather balloon with radio sound in Slidell, Louisiana. We're an official upper air site for the National Weather Service. The weather balloon carries instruments to measure weather in the upper air as it rises. The data is highly, highly critical for the weather modeling process to get the best available forecasts. This launch is choreographed twice daily with launches at over 90 locations in the United States and another 700 worldwide. At 23Z and 11Z locally during daylight time at 6 in the morning and 6 at night. This step is pretty obvious. Filling up the weather balloon. And then tying it closed. Nothing's worse than letting a balloon get out of your hands. Before the launch, Jim is on a computer. Looking at the upper wind flow, so we, we, get, we have a good idea of where the radio sound is going to travel after we release. The radio sound is then checked for accuracy. We compare that with weather instruments that we have here at the office to make sure the sound is actually, um, that the data is correct before we actually release it. A battery powers the sensors for temperature, humidity, and pressure, as well as a GPS unit used to help determine wind. The radio sound transmits the data back to the uh, telemetry receiving system, so that way we can get the data real time. Because the instrument may end up landing in your backyard. We put this sticker on here to let folks know it's a harmless weather instrument. Harmless, but the balloon may contain hydrogen. You want to take great care and caution in handling that because it is a, a flammable gas. Also, if you find a recently used radio sound, the batteries might be hot or hissing. Just let them cool and quiet down before handling. It's not a hazard. And now it's launch time. On a sunny day, so we watch out for aircraft. Have to really be careful of different obstacles, uh, trees, power lines. But on a stormy day, you might only have a five or 10 minute window before the next line of storms. Either way, the data is valuable. Typically when we release the balloon, it's right around five to six feet in diameter. But as it goes through the atmosphere and expands through the higher altitudes, this actually expands to almost 20 feet or greater before it actually bursts. Usually at our office, our weather balloons burst at over 105,000 feet. That's 20 miles up. How far it travels? Really depends on how strong the upper level winds are. The balloon may travel a dozen miles away or a couple hundred miles away. No matter how far it travels, it's all for the data. And what we have in front of us is clear evidence that it can travel 100 miles, land here in Mobile. That's the parachute. This is the latex balloon. Nate. This is the radio sign. And the cool thing is, if you ever find it, you open it up. There's a, a self-addressed stamped envelope from the National Weather Service. You take it to the post office, give it to the clerk. They send it back to be refurbished, and they send it up again. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Yeah, kind uh -huh. of fun stuff. But twice a day, day and night, that's the other fascinating part. Our weather, it is.